So the other day, I was trying to follow all of the news about OpenAI and Sam Altman and all this crazy stuff, and I decided to do something a little bit strange. I actually posted this on threads. I went to Google's Bard uh, AI, and I asked it some questions about this news story, and it actually gave me a pretty decent answer. Then I asked some follow-up questions, and it also gave me some pretty decent uh, answers as well. I just thought that was kind of funny that I'm, I'm asking one AI questions about another AI company. And that kind of got me thinking, how else could I leverage Bard to sort of make content? And I decided this morning what we would do is we would turn to Bard and we would ask it some questions about the Pixel Fold and see what it says. Let's see what Google Bard thinks about the Pixel Fold. We're gonna kind of critique these answers and see how accurate I feel like they are. So the first thing I asked was, what are the biggest issues with the Google Pixel Fold? And they gave a few answers here. So first off is durability. Now, of course, Google says the Pixel Fold is extremely durable, but Bard is being a bit more realistic. The Pixel Fold's display is made of a type of plastic that is more prone to scratching and cracking than the glass used in most other smartphones. I'm gonna actually ask sort of like a tangential question here. So let's let's try this. What is the ultra thin glass used in folding phones really made of? Because I see this all the time. Is it plastic? Is it glass? Is it plastic mixed with glass? It's a difficult question to answer. So we're gonna get the answer from Bard. It's a closely guarded secret. It's generally understood to be a type of, oh my Lord, aluminosilicate glass, which is a glass that contains both aluminum and silicon oxides. That is very interesting, if accurate. It may also contain other additives to improve its properties. For example, some UTG formulations may include a small amount of plastic to make the glass more flexible. So they are stating, kind of in contrast to what they said here about the Pixel Fold, it's not made of plastic because it is ultra thin glass, which is some sort of aluminum mixed in with glass, maybe some plastic mixed in there as well. Anyways, that's sort of a point of contention for me. We're gonna move on from this point. The hinge mechanism is also a potential point of failure and there have been reports of pixel folds breaking after being dropped or folded too many times. I don't know how true that is. I don't know if anyone folded it too many times. Now there definitely have been what you would call like a factory lemon. You just get something that just, you just got a bad one, right? I used to work in the automotive industry and sometimes you would send somebody home with a ball joint and it would come back defective and they'd say, how does this happen? You go, well, it's mass produced and anything that gets mass produced, you're going to have a certain percentage of them that just aren't good. Something's wrong with them, whether it's the hinge, whether it's a problem with the ultra thin glass, whatever it might be, you're going to have these sort of factory defects. And that's Absolutely true. I will say though, you know, yeah, folding phones are not as durable as normal phones because ultra thin glass, whether it's plastic or it's an aluminosilicate glass, it's not as durable as proper Gorilla Glass, Victus Corning Glass. So that's absolutely fair. Software optimization. The Pixel Fold's large display is great for multitasking and for watching videos, yeah, I think that's probably mostly accurate, but some apps are not yet optimized for. This can cause problems with things like text overflow and buttons being too small to tap. Now, personally, I've not seen a whole lot of that. I think I've maybe seen someone talk about maybe Instagram has some weird formatting problems, but they've rolled out their new version of Instagram, which does handle uh, these larger screens a bit better. What I'd say in terms of software optimization is more just software features than optimization because yes, I would love to see every application properly support the large screen with you know a dual pane layout, a proper tablet layout. But in lieu of that, most apps can stretch and it's not so much, you know, Two th things too small to tap or text overflow as much as it is just apps stretched across a wide screen just might not be conducive to like getting a whole lot done. It may just not look good, may not function very well. So that's certainly true. We do need more apps to support it. So optimization, sure. But for me, it's more about features, right? Like, please, Google, give us a floating window, app pairs, um, things like that absolutely need to be on the docket for the Pixel Fold, especially as, you know, I use the OnePlus Open more and more, which has open canvas, which is fantastic, floating windows. The Pixel Fold does need to catch up in these places. How about price? The Pixel Fold is a very expensive phone and it's not clear that it's worth the extra money compared to other foldable phones on the market. Google Bard absolutely swinging for the fences on that one. And I think that's 
totally fair. When you look at the Pixel Fold, it is missing some of the features that the Z Fold and the OnePlus Open do have. So you would have to kind of determine for yourself if it's worth that much money in general, but especially when compared to, you know, side by side with the OnePlus Open and with the Z Fold, which does just objectively have more features. Why are you going with the Pixel Fold? For me, it's the form factor, right? It's the size, the shape of the device, and it's the Google Pixel software. But it is not clear that that's worth it for everyone. So I think that's pretty fair. What did reviewers not like about it? Let's kind of dig in a bit deeper and maybe see some more specific answers about what people didn't like about the Pixel Fold, and we can go from there. So maybe, maybe getting a little bit of repetition here. This is pretty strange. This image looks to be warped in some way. Uh, so durability, the Pixel's fault. Okay, so durability, software optimization, price, battery life. So there's another one. The Pixel's battery life is not as good as some other smartphones, and it can be a problem if, if you use a device heavily. So that's absolutely true. Some devices, like even other Pixel devices, do definitely have longer battery life. In the context of foldables, for me, the Pixel Fold's right there with the Z Fold. It's right there with OnePlus Open. It's probably worse than the OnePlus Open, and it's probably worse than the Fold 5, but not by a substantial margin. How about camera? The Pixel Fold's camera is not as good as the camera on some of the smartphones. Uh, very similar answer to the battery one. And yeah, I, I do definitely think it is a step down from your Pixel flagships. The primary sensor just isn't quite as good. There's a little bit more noise in particular in low light video is significantly worse than on the other Pixel, you know, 7, 8, 8 Pro, these sorts of devices. And the zoom compared to the Pro devices is not quite as clear either because it's not nearly as large or nearly as high resolution, perhaps I should say, of a sensor. So I think those are definitely pretty fair answers as well. What do you love about the Pixel Fold? Let's shift gears and let's go to a more positive direction with Bard. The Pixel Fold is a foldable smartphone. That's a great answer right there. It's foldable and I love that. So here's some of the things you can love about the Pixel Fold. The big screen, that's, you know, absolutely the reason that you're buying this device. Personally, I love the orientation that it's in. As much as I do enjoy the OnePlus Open, I, I do really wish that it had the same orientation as the Pixel Fold, I wish it was a bit shorter and a bit wider. That's just my preference. You're free to disagree. Portability can be folded in half, making it more portable than other smartphones with large screens. That's, again, the appeal of a folding device. And I think that the part about it with the Pixel Fold that is unique is the shape. It is a bit shorter and a bit wider, which to me, I think fits in my pocket a little bit better. I wish it was lighter, but I do like that shape in particular in the pocket. The camera, the Pixel Fold has a great camera system. I do think it's a better camera system than my Z Fold 4 for the most part. I think it's worse overall than the OnePlus Open, but it is pretty decent. Performance is fine. I don't think I would call out performance as being like a great thing about the Pixel Fold because it is probably the slowest if you factor in everything of the three foldables available in North America. I do think that in normal tasks, it is absolutely just as fast. When you're loading up two apps and you're moving around, you're doing things, it's totally fine. Even in some video editing scenarios, processing video, it's actually just as fast as the other ones. But if you're gaming, if you're doing something like really intense, demanding tasks like they state, it's gonna fall behind. The software, the Pixel Fold comes with Google's latest software that is absolutely one of my favorite aspects of the Google Pixel Fold. It's like the second biggest factor that keeps uh, drawing me back in. I've told you guys, I've been moving between the OnePlus Open and the Pixel Fold almost on a daily basis because I just can't decide. I love different things about both of them so much that Pixel software is a really, really big part of that. So guys, I think that was uh, kind of interesting. Perhaps we'll do the same thing with the OnePlus Open and use Bard to kind of give us these jumping off points and things that will allow me to kind of dig a bit deeper. If you want to see that, drop a comment down below. Maybe subscribe before you leave. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.